Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today's topic of the video is different cycles of our body. So there are a number of cycles and the body has an amalgamation of these cycles for proper functioning. Like there's a sleep-wake cycle, there's a digestion cycle, there's a hair growth cycle, there's an energy production cycle. So we are going to have a brief review of the cycles in our body. So the number one is the hair growth cycle. Remember that those people who are bad, that is they are suffering from alopecia, either due to chemotherapy or due to any other cause like alopecia, aricata, androgenata, that is due to androgen testosterone hormone, the hair is not able to grow, the hair follicles are damaged, any other reason. This cycle is majorly responsible for that. So there are basically three phases in this cycle, anagen, catagen and telogen. Anagen is basically for 3 to 5 years wherein your follicle is deep rooted and it takes time for it to grow. Catagen is of 4 weeks wherein the, there is proper growth of the hair. And telogen is the actually maturation stage you can say. And it is for about 3 to 4 months. So the hair growth is maximum in the anagen, minimum in the catagen and moderate in the telogen. So you can see here the growing phases. The anagenic phase the catagenic phase, which is a transition phase, the telogen, which is usually the resting phase, and finally the exogen, when the hair is removed. The next is the sleep-wake cycle or the circadian rhythm or the diurnal rhythm. So whenever you, suppose if you have a habit, it, according to the human psychology, if you perform any activity for 21 days, it becomes your habit. So suppose if you sleep every day at around 11 o'clock in the night for 21 days, you will automatically feel sleepy at 11 o'clock on the 22nd day also. That is very interesting because this is a melatonin cycle. Um, melatonin is basically a hormone that is involved in your sleep-wake cycle along with the clock genes. There are certain genes that are called as clock genes. These are responsible for you so many a times you would have heard people saying that um, they are not feeling sleepy or majorly this happens in the geriatric patients. They say that neend nahi aari hai, or they have to consume certain medications like alprazolam or any benzodiazepine sedative hypnotic for sleeping pills as sleeping pills. So this is due to the disruption of the sleep-wake cycle. So there are basically two phases, NREM and REM. REM is rapid eye movements and NREM is non-rapid eye movements. One, that is, there are different phases. Firstly, you lie on the bed. Immediately after lying on the bed, you do not fall asleep or you do not uh, get into the sleeping stage. There is a particular cycle of that is going on. Your eye movements, your corneal movements, the uh, retinal movements are still going on. Even when you are closing your eyes, there are certain movements that are going on. So the heart rate slows down. The other, all the other tasks slow down. The body starts uh, feeling a little relaxed. A body starts uh, feeling a little calm. And the body temperature at the night decreases. That is why we say that mostly um, the angina attacks, angina pectoris, which are the chest pain, it occurs in the early morning and in the late night. Why so? Because the body temperature is extremely low. So these are few of the reasons uh, that the sleep-wake cycle or the circadian rhythm or the diurnal rhythm that is important so basically the sleep-wake homeostasis and the circadian rhythm they are responsible for your sleep and there are certain other external factors as well like the environment or the temperature of the environment the surrounding and there are many other factors that govern so over here you can see a chart that represents the different phases so here you can see that um, to, uh, 2 o'clock at, at the night, there is a deepest sleep. That, so from the 2 to 4, this stage is said to be the sleep uh, stage of sleepiest one. Because you are in your deep sleep at this stage. Then the levels of lymphocytes are more in the morning from 2 to 5. Then the cortisol, which is a corticosteroid. The hormone around 6 o'clock, the secretion begins. Insulin, which is diabetes, a, a hormone that is governed for if the insulin level is decreased, you may suffer from diabetes. That is why we give insulin analogs in a patient with diabetes mellitus. At 9 o'clock, there is elevated testosterone. 
at 11 o'clock there is alertness from 10 to 11 that is why you would have seen that most of the schools most of the colleges are from morning till the afternoon around 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock or 6 30 to 1 30 something like that why is that so because your stage of alertness is most in the morning that is why it's in the uh, the schools and colleges are kept in the morning your cardiovascular and skeletal muscle strength is most in the 5 o'clock in the evening. That is why they say that you must go for a walk in the evening. So going for a walk in the evening helps to relieve the contraction between the muscles. They become a little more relaxed so that you can properly perform all your movements. So evening 5 is that time and at 6 o'clock high lipid levels. So you would have seen that mostly the anti-hyperlipidemic agents they are preferred to be having at this time like lovastatin, clofibrates, cholestipol. These are medications that are to be preferred because there are extremely high lipid levels in the evening. Finally, in the night, the blood pressure and the temperature increases around 7 to 9 o'clock. That is why we say that this is a period of resting. So, mostly the you would have seen that jobs are from 9 to 5. 9 in the morning till 5 in the evening or max to max it could be 10 to 7 after 7 there are no mostly jobs are not there why so because this is the stage of high blood pressure and temperature a body is not in that stage it might be a little saturated it might not be that active proactive that is the reason the next up we have is the menstrual cycle so menstrual cycle is mainly from the menarche to menopause in every female this cycle occurs right from menarche up to the menopause menopause is usually attained at the age of 50 to 55 years where the menstrual cycle uh, the blood and blood flow eventually stops so there are different phases of the cycle first is the periodic phase where actually the blood and the unfertilized eggs are excreted out or they are eliminated from the body so that is why the first stage is the periodic phase. The second is the menstrual or the proliferative stage. The follicular stage which is also called as follicular stage. So proliferative or follicular stage is basically from your 11th to 21st day. The next is your ovulation stage. So if the ovulation, uh, if the corpus hemorrhagicum and the corpus albicans is persisted, there could be chances of conception, there could be chances of pregnancy. However, if the unfertilized egg is again uh, unfertilized only, so the new menstrual cycle will start on the next month. So, suppose if your menstrual cycle starts from 2nd of the January. So, uh, around, uh, uh, consider 28 days around the 1st of Feb or so, your 2nd cycle of menstruation will occur. During this phase, there are a number of changes that occur in a female's body, like a difference in the estrogen and progesterone hormone. A difference in the uh, FSH that is follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and the size of the endometrium changes so whenever a female you can see in the first three to four days uh, there is extreme pain and extreme menstrual cramps that is because the size of the endometrium is changing the morphology is being altered and that is why a uh, meftal pass this medication is given which consists of mef uh, mefenamic acid for relief of menstrual cramps and there are certain home remedies as well for the menstrual cramps so right from the menage that is from 11 to 55 this cycle occurs and goes on consistently for uh, these the for this particular period and there are so many home remedies as well and uh, certain medications that are actually uh, for the menstrual that is having a chamomile tea eating more ginger because ginger is very good for menstrual health exercising and folic acid consumption that is also very very essential and one very interesting thing eating unripe papaya eggs that are boiled are very very good so unripe papaya eggs are uh, can be consumed but not during the periods once your periods are over after that the unripe papaya seeds are to be consumed or before that they are very very useful in your menstrual cycle also jeera that is uh, cumin seeds so cumin seeds is basically uh, because during the periods there could be indigestion so uh, having more amount of jeera that is cumin seeds would be beneficial and if there are any hormonal changes if there are any un unexpected uh, 
menstrual cycle suppose if you were expecting the cycle on 1st of feb and it started earlier so that is irregular it could be one of the underlying cause of pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome or any fibroids etc but yes if it if it is irregular then eating carrots carrots is a very very helpful tool in uh, menstrual health and also eating uh, cinnamon sticks cinnamon is very very good in menstrual health that is a uh, Uh, the Ceylon Dalchini. So cinnamon sticks are also very very useful. So uh, this is the menstrual cycle basically. The next up we have is the urea cycle. That is the urine cycle. So it uh, there are a number of um, condensation reactions that occur. The carbon dioxide firstly combines with the ammonia to form carbonyl phosphate. This with the help of enzyme ornithine de or ornithine carbonyl transferase. forms citrulline citrulline forms arginosuccinate with the help of enzyme arginosuccinate synthesis it further forms levo uh, l arginine arginosuccinate lyase and finally urea urea is not to be kept uh, urea is something that is an excretory material it needs to be eliminated out of body that is why in the urine test you perform one test that is blood urea nitrogen blood urine nitrogen or blood urea nitrogen because if there is more amount of nitrogen you could suffer from a disease called as azotemia so that's all from the urea cycle so urea cycle is extremely essential in one's human body the next up we have is cardiac cycle that is a cycle of your heart so heart has basically three phases arteriolar systole ventricular systole and joint diastole or complete cardiac diastole that is called as ccd complete cardiac diastole or joint diastole so in your arterial systole there is depolarization again over here there is depolarization finally there is a repolarization after that that means there is contraction contraction and relaxation of what of the cardiac muscles systole systole diastole contraction contraction relaxation depolarization depolarization repolarization so your heart basically has uh, four chambers two atrium and two ventricles so there is a pulmonary system as well and there is a double circulation systemic circulation so oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is uh, supplied through various arteries and veins uh, superior vena cava inferior vena cava aorta pulmonary artery pulmonary vein that is lungs hepatic portal system they are imp important so the cardiac cycle is basically responsible for your uh, maintenance of blood pressure for maintenance of your arteriolar pressure pulse pressure etc so that is why a pulse pressure measurement of blood pressure is very very important so that is why you take the sphygmo manometer for measurement of a uh, pulse uh, for measurement of the blood pressure besides that the pulse pressure should be less than 60 it should not be much more than 60 also uh, if you go to see the normal blood pressure should be 120 to 80 mmhg of your systolic and diastolic sd it should be between 120 to 80 and your normal heart rate should be around 60 to 100 beats per minute 60 to 100 if it's less than 60 it is bradycardia if it's greater than 100 it is tachycardia so many a times we say that dil ki dhadkan tez ho gayi aur dil ki dhadkan dheemi ho gayi that means your heart rate and your pumping has slowed down or has been extremely accelerated that is why the next up we have is krebs cycle the krebs cycle is very very essential because it is responsible for energy production in your body and krebs cycle glycolysis gluconeogenesis glycogenesis glycogenolysis these are cycles that work together and basically there is conversion uh, when pyruvate gets uh, uh, converted into acetyl coenzyme a it forms citrate cis aconitate isocitrate alpha ketoglutarate which is the only five carbon compound formed succinyl coenzyme a succinate fumarate malate oxaloacetate so these are few of the cycles uh, the uh, cycle intermediates that are involved and there is nadp production atp production fad fmnh2 
even your uh, different vitamins are involved like in nad your nicotinamide that is vitamin b3 is involved then your riboflavin vitamin b2 is involved in fmnh2 that is flavin mononucleotide and flavin dinucleotide so the next up here as i mentioned it is glycogenesis that is formation of glycogen from glucose and glycogenolysis that is formation of glucose from glycogen so they are opposite cycles here you form glucose from glycogen here you convert glycogen into glucose so they are basically uh, involved in liver and muscles and there are certain enzymes like the phosphoglucomutase uh, phosphoglucokinase liver glucokinase that are involved in glu glycolysis uh, you have conversion of uh, glucose into pyruvate pyruvate using a number of steps like glucose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate fructose 1 comma 6 diphosphate uh, dhap and uh, gpa similarly the next cycle up that we have is glycolysis here you can see this is a glycolysis cycle that is uh, again important for energy so you say that you need to be energetic so your glycolysis your krebs cycle your gluconeogenesis needs to work well uh, this is an internal cycle so in our body there is an inherent cycle that goes on right from the morning up till the night where your melatonin hormones your bowel movements your body temperature your hormonal levels your reaction times everything is being uh, properly uh, framed up and there's a proper sequence or a cascading action of the same that is why internal cycle maintenance is very very essential the next up we have is the human growth cycle so right from the fetus right from a female conceiving and uh, there is fusion of sperm and the ova there is formation of a zygote this zygote turns out to be a fetus in the uterus in the womb of a woman after that after the delivery this there is a baby or an infant after the infant up till the around around age of 3 it is a toddler at the age of three we send them to kindergartens at which that means a, a student or that particular child is able to understand at least something that is why the stage is called as preschooling stage and around six to twelve there is obviously uh, the nursery junior senior primary schooling and then the secondary schooling finally the teenager stage the stage from 13 years to 19 years this is called as teenager stage that is why it is 13 14 15 that teen stands for teenager or adolescent stage then comes the adulthood stage which is from around 35 to 55 and uh, the, in this stage there is a lot of responsibilities and work you uh, complete uh, undergraduate courses postgraduate courses your phd degrees and finally the geriatric stage or the old person stage that is 65 age of and plus so these are the different stages of the human growth cycle involved right from a fetus up till the old person next is up is your cell cycle so your cell cycle is involved in your cancer if this cell cycle is disrupted there is cancer so there are basically two phenomena in body apoptosis and necrosis these are cell deaths so those cells that are unwanted they die but if the process of apoptosis and necrosis is not occurring so those cells multiply and they quickly invade they are very invasive they form malignancy so that is why the major cause of cancer is disrupted cell cycle and the drugs given in the cells uh, in the cancer treatment are also acting on this same cell cycle so we have g0 phase g1 phase s phase g2 phase that has pre mitotic mitotic post mitotic phase where a number of uh, prophase, metaphase, karyokinesis, cytokinesis, uh, telophase, all of these phases occur. There is cell division, the spindle fibers are formed and all. So that is why for a cell, if a cell goes in the G0 stage or the quescent stage, again, it's not nice. It's a chances of tumor and mostly brain tumors are due to just G0 stage only. So that the cell cycle is extremely essential part of our body. And the final one is the water cycle, the last uh, cycle for today. 
that is uh, water is around 70 percent 65 to 70 percent in human body and that is why they say that dinme at least you have to uh, consume this particular liter amount of water why so what are the uses water regulates body temperature it is a thermoregulator it is involved in the digestion process it because it converts food it softens the food it acts as a shock absorber for brain it helps in delivering oxygen to the overall body parts it lubricates the joints it flushes the body waste so your urination frequent urination leads to elimination of certain body waste from our body and it keeps the mucosal membrane moist and hydrated so your skin needs to be moist and hydrated there are different types of skin dry skin wet skin combination skin so if your skin becomes too dry it cracks and winters you would have seen that you apply usually vaseline and all why so because there are cracks in your skin it is it is due to dehydration it is due to less amount of water and moisture so having water keeps it moist so that is what is the role of water cycle in our body so that's all for today's video thank you so much for watching it i hope you all liked it kindly do share subscribe and let me down your comments in the section Thank you so much.